Hello, my name is Jan Anderson. I'm the director of the Division of Minimally Invasive Gynecologic Surgery at the Brigham Women's Hospital. And this video will show uh, laparoscopic excision of endometriosis in a variety of clinical scenarios. This video shows a case of incomplete excision of endometriosis. This patient had been operated on elsewhere uh, two or three times had had a bowel resection by a colorectal surgeon and also had uh, multiple surgeries by a gynecologist, including a hysterectomy, but continued to have pelvic pain. On exam, she was noted to have a nodule that was still present and was clearly uh, painful and that this had been missed uh, on prior surgeries. Uh, these cases can be quite challenging because um, these patients sometimes have had multiple surgeries, which has caused significant adhesions. And uh, in this case, we have to mobilize the bowel off of the ovary that is completely adherent to the pelvic sidewall. The bowel is on the right side and the ovary is on the left side uh, of the image. And uh, we have to be very careful to separate these structures without injuring the bowel. You can see now that the bowel has been mobilized slightly, but there's still a lot of work to be done to fully move the bowel out of the area. Once the bowel is mobilized, we're able to find a nodule that's very deep in the pelvis and was probably easily missed as because of that. Um, here, the nodule is being delineated from the pelvic floor muscles that can be seen at the bottom of the image. The bowel is on the right side and the nodule is at the top. The nodule extended into the vagina and we had to open the vagina and remove the nodule from there. And you can see the extent of the dissection that we had to do. The ureter is seen free and the nerves are see free and then uh, all of the nodule has been com completely removed at this point. This is an edited video of bowel endometriosis. This patient had a large nodule in her rectum that is being excised. Uh, here the nodule has been excised from the rectum fully. Uh, we had to enter the rectal lumen in order to remove this um, whole nodule. Uh, the nodule is here being removed and sent to pathology. And then we have to meticulously close the defect in the rectum uh, with uh, two to three layers of suturing that um, are being demonstrated here. We do also offer a bowel resection to patients that have very large lesions or multiple lesions. However, we try to avoid that if possible uh, and because there may be slightly higher risk of complications with that procedure. And if we can, be conservative, uh, but also having complete removal of the lesion, then that. Here the second layer of uh, closure is being performed on the bowel and uh, in this case we did use three layers uh, because the lesion was quite large. Uh, but it's important to make sure that the suture line is clean and that the anastomosis of the bowel is done meticulously. We do check of course if there's any leaks or any concern prior to ending the procedure. Here we are passing an EEA sizer and also checking for any air bubbles um, at the end of the procedure. This is a video showing a, an appendectomy in a patient with endometriosis of the appendix. Uh, an appendectomy is a fairly simple procedure. Uh, we first separate the fat and blood supply to the appendix from the underside of it um, until the base of the appendix where it attaches to the large bowel. Then uh, we use uh, endo loops, which are suture loops that are preformed to occlude the appendix um, proximally or close to the large bowel, which can be seen there. We place three of them and then we separate the appendix between 
two loops that are close to the large bowel and one loop that's uh, on the appendix that's being removed. And patients do get antibiotics uh, for this, um, but uh, risk of infection is generally very low and risk of complication is also low. There the appendix is being transected and it will be then removed and sent to pathology for uh, examination. This is an edited video of endometriosis of the left ureter. A stricture has formed on the ureter that can be seen in the middle of the image and we have to cut that out in order to uh, preserve the kidney function uh, in that on that side. We usually will pass a stent initially through the ureter, uh, but in this case the stricture was too uh, pronounced for us to be able to pass the stent and therefore we had to cut out the area of stricture initially. You can see urine come out of the proximal ureter, uh, which is well patent just above the uh, stricture. We're using just scissors in order to prevent any thermal damage to the ureter during this step. We then spatulate the ureter, um, making the opening that we're going to put together a little bit bigger for increasing the surface area of the opening, and this will uh, reduce the chances of a stricture or narrowing of the ureter uh, during the healing process. Again, we're avoiding the use of energy to promote uh, good healing. We then place one stitch of an absorbable suture to um, reapproximate the two ends of the ureter prior to passing the stent from the bladder to the kidney. This required, requires some expertise in suturing, uh, but can be fairly easily accomplished in this manner. We then tie uh, the suture a few times, which approximates the two ends of the ureter. Then a stent is placed through the bladder and it is then passed from the lower edge of the ureter to the upper one as can be seen here. We then place several other sutures in order to close the ureter circumferentially. And again, we use absorbable sutures that are tied laparoscopically. The stent has to be in place for approximately six weeks and can be then removed in the office later on. Once the repair is finished, we do a cystoscopy and also a careful examination to make sure that everything looks appropriate. This is a brief video showing endometriosis of the bladder. The lesion can be seen in front of the uterus and also on cystoscopy as a purple lesion. Um, the lesion is away from the area where the ureters enter into the bladder. We fir first define the lesion uh, by separating adhesions and finding a plane between the uterus and cervix and the bladder, mobilizing the bladder away from the uterus and the vagina. Then the lesion is excised from the bladder using the harmonic scalpel. And in this case, the lesion is going through the entire wall of the bladder, and therefore the bladder needs to be entered and there's a hole in the bladder there, which will open up further in order to fully remove the lesion. This can be done under cystoscopic control, where we have a camera inside the bladder as well. 
to make sure that we get the entire lesion removed. The Foley catheter is seen inside of the bladder after the lesion has been excised. This will be removed later on. And we always look for the entrance of the ureter into the bladder, which can be seen uh, there on the right side to make and then the left side to make sure that uh, the lesion was nowhere near these sites. If it is, then uh, stenting of the ureter may be required. The bladder is then repaired in two layers with uh, laparoscopic suturing. We will usually use uh, standard uh, sutures that will dissolve in approximately a month or two. We usually close again in two layers to make sure that there's uh, no leakage uh, in the closure and patients have to wear a catheter for seven to ten days afterwards to allow the bladder to heal. This is the second layer being completed uh, there and then at the end we will fill the bladder to make sure there's no leakage as you can see here and also do a cystoscopy again looking inside the bladder to make sure that the suture line looks good. Here an endometriosis lesion of the diaphragm has been excised. The lung can be seen uh, in the distance and then we close this with sutures and usually work with thoracic surgeons that will explore the thoracic cavity at the same time as well.